Lions fans, what's going on? It's your boy King, man. Listen, hey, preseason game one is done. Detroit Lions didn't come out with a victory, but who cares? It's the preseason, right? We're there to evaluate people, and that's what I did today. So I got a lot to break down for you guys. Let's dig in. fans so once again shout out to lions nation unite man that's my family over there shout out to all of my fellows over there from mike dosa Dion, easy spitz everybody that's over there man we've been having a blast this training camp and preseason game one the continuation <laughs> social media has been fun today a lot of excitement right for obvious reasons but we're going to get into those a little bit later in the video first and foremost we got to talk about a very, very special player. <laughs> and that special player is Nate Sudfield. Nate Sudfield is the greatest thing I've seen on turf. I've never seen a quarterback. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? On a serious note, Nate Sudfield has to get off my football team. I am tired of watching this man play football in Detroit Lions gear. It is time. Please, can we please get him off this team? I don't want I don't wish bad on anybody. I don't want to see anybody lose a job, but this job just ain't it. You know, maybe he could be an assistant or something, help out and around a facility, do something else. But quarterback is not where I want to see Sutfield. That was the longest first half of football that I've ever had to experience. Twitter went crazy. Hell, I even seen posts on Instagram. <laughs> we were waiting to see our guy. And when he got into the game, it was as advertised. Hendon Hooker looked great out there. And I don't want to go into too many details in this video because I have a separate video for that. But he looked great. And you're looking for what in the training camp and preseason process? We've talked about it before. Flashes. Well, he gave us a lot of flashes today. Um, Hendon Hooker was a breath of fresh air at QB. He brings that other dimension that we talk about. So we're going to break all of that down in a separate video. I know you guys are just as excited as I am. You guys have been waiting just as long as I have to see him hit the field. He, he hasn't snapped a football since 2022. And that was, that was during a campaign for a Heisman Trophy. So, enough said, right? Well, looking at the preseason game today, who stood out besides Andy Hooker? I would say our DB room. Our DB room looked really, really good today, and they were very impressive. And this is, you know, at the beginning of the game. This is not when the third string got in. These guys looked impressive. Uh, things got a little bit loose at the end of the game when the last strings were in. Rake Straw, Robertson, Terion Arnold, all three looked very, very impressive. Um, I mean... They did their jobs. When you don't hear their names, that's that's what you're looking for. Uh, you don't want to hear the names out there. You don't want to see them get burnt on plays. You don't want to see, uh, you know, those guys get abused by receivers out there. We've been hearing all of these things about neighbors during practice and everything. It's practice. <laughs> it's practice. That this is why I say you can't. You, you have to take that with a grain of salt. Practice is practice. Um, but with that said, today, they took care of business. Uh, you know, those guys were sticky out there. They, did, they they handled those defensive assignments very well. And that's what you want to see in a preseason game. Terry Ion was a little bit short-lived, um, did his job, got out of there. Uh, Rick Straw, he went for the stretch today. And, I mean, he didn't give up anything. So, you know, that that's what you want to see. Uh, it's consistent 
along with the film that you've seen from college to the training camp practices to all the camp practices all the way up until now it's been consistency with Rick Straw and that's been the most impressive thing Robinson has a little bit you know uh, Amik has a uh, a little bit of a, a, a chip on the shoulder um when Amik was out there, you can just tell it, it just it just feels like he's heard a little bit of the, the, the chirping, you know, what I'm saying like he don't exist in that DV room, you know, what I'm saying. So he definitely made his presence felt today. Uh, 24 Gilmore, another one, another young guy when he's available out there on the field. Um, you know, he, he 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 looks great out there. He looks great out there. Um you also see guys like Brandon Joseph, who's trying to get to that, uh, get on the roster and get that that practice uh, squad type of position. Just trying to get himself in the door and stay in the door. Uh, you see him make a play today and get himself an interception. So, uh, you know, that DB room today was impressive. They were impressive overall. Uh, the defense in general was just impressive. You seen the D line show up today. You got some sacks today. Uh, man, you got Aqua from Ole Miss, undrafted. Uh, number 45, man, was getting back there. So he was creating pressure. We were creating pressure in general. Roderick Martin, we talked about how he's improved his body. You know, uh, uh, you know, all the hard work that he's put in, was able to get himself a sack today as well. But you just seen the pressure overall. You know, James Houston was out there too. Even though he had a, a boneheaded penalty, man, um, still, he still looked like he was a, a lot faster than what we've seen at the end of the season when he returned. He looks healthy, and that's what you want to see because you know how talent, talented he is already. So, you know, it's just, it was a, a lot. At the same time, it was pretty simple watching this game. Um, you, you're trying to watch so many people and evaluate er everything out there. But the first go around, it's not exactly easy to catch everything, right? Uh, Vaki got out there on the, on the field today and was very impressive. You know, the run game just was not there today. The holes were just not being open. Uh, again, we're talking second and third units here. Undrafted guys on that offensive line. So, uh, you know, for Vaki to still be able to get out there and wiggle out some yards, man, and make plays out of nothing, that was very impressive. That was very impressive in the running back room because guys like Jefferson and, and Knight, they could not get it going. You know what I'm saying? He did once, once he got in the game. Um, you know, the defensive instincts kicked in. You see him, you know, with that nose for the football, go and recover a fumble um, and get the Lions the ball back. So that's just what Vaki is, man. He's a football player. Dan Campbell talks about it all the time. He's a football player. Um, you can use him wherever you please. You know, so that was very impressive, man. Other than that, man, you had a few struggles out there. Alexander uh, struggled catching the football. It was rainy. Um, but catching the football and kicking situations, man, you know, just wasn't good for him. Wasn't able to hold on to the football. Uh, late in the game, he did catch some passes, though. He was able to pull down some passes. But when it comes to the receiver room, the guys that you were looking for was DPJ, uh, Fountain, you know, Green, who went out with a concussion. Um, you know, you have Calhoun. But one of the, the names that I was looking forward to see was Isaiah Williams. You know what I'm saying? And later in the game, he really came on. You know, him and Calhoun, they were catching passes, even though Sudfield was the QB. They were making something out of nothing. You know, when they had an opportunity to get out on the field, they took that opportunity. That's what you want to see in a preseason. So, um yeah, very impressive, man. DPJ was able to get one pass later on in the game. Guys got out there ahead of him. I kind of feel like he's in this little doghouse situation because Dan Campbell, as he said, they want to see more out of DPJ. Um, they want to see more of that talent, more of the use of that speed and that body style um, and the hands that he has. You just want to see more. You want to see more dominance out there when he's on the field. So. Uh, right now, they're playing the mental game with him. Let's see how he, he takes this, you know, and if he can respond from it. It's going to be important for him because between him and Fountain, I think those guys are fighting for that wide receiver uh, four type of uh, ordeal. So, yeah, um, 
But as far as notes, that's pretty much it from this preseason game. I'll be going back to watch it a second time, of course, um, and, and really look into those trenches. Um, did get a chance to see a little bit of Giovanni Manu out there. He did win some battles, but at the same time, he did uh, lose a couple. The guys were able to run right by him. Those feet is, you know, that's one of the things that he's working on. So, you know, being able to move those feet and, and, and understand this movement out there is what the Lions are working with him uh, on. It's just something that's going to take some time. He has to learn the game of football from that offensive stamp, that offensive line standpoint. Um, and that doesn't come overnight. So with that said, the Detroit Lions are going to do a lot of growing during this preseason process, man, because those coaches that we have, man, they're, they're ready to get these guys coached up and try to maximize what they can out of these young guys uh, before we have to make those those tough decisions, man. Uh, bringing this roster down to 53, um, it's going to be tough because guys are taking advantage of their opportunities, and that's what we ask for as a fan base. It's not about wins and losses, but, you know, um, for what we've seen today, we've had our exciting moments out there. But you you can only take that with a grain of salt because it's preseason. Um, and you're looking for flashes. But we can't determine the future of a player completely off the preseason. So with that said, leave it in the comment section, man. What was you most impressed with? I already know it's going to be a lot of Hendon Hooker. We're going to talk about that. Uh, you guys can look forward to seeing that video tomorrow. Um, but, yeah, what were you most impressed with? Who was surprising to you? Uh, what did you learn about players today? That's what I'm looking for in the comment section with this video. Um, and with that, that being said, man, you know, I, I just can't wait. Uh, I can't wait till we get to the regular season. <laughs> it's going to be fun this season to be a Lions fan. It's a great time to be a Lions fan. Enjoy it. Uh, let's keep this excitement going. And uh, you guys have a blessed night. Peace.